Good morning and happy St. Patrick's Day. Welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We ask that all during the ongoing pandemic continue to use hand sanitizers and maintain a distance of two meters. The wearing of masks is strongly encouraged. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch and our entrance chant is This Day God Gives Me, number 650 in the Catholic Book of Worship. This day God gives me strength of high heaven, sun and moon shining, flame in my heart, flashing of lightning, wood in its swiftness, deeps of the ocean. sends me strength to sustain me, might to uphold me, wisdom as guide. Your eyes are watchful, your ears are listening, your lips are speaking, friend at my side. God's way is my way, God's shield is round me, God's host defends me, saving from ill. Angels of heaven drive from me always, all that would harm me, stand by me. Rising, I thank you, mighty and strong one, King of creation, giver of rest. Firmly confessing threeness of persons, oneness of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone, and happy St. Patrick's Day to everybody today. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today, we ask the Lord to come into our hearts to forgive us for the times we have failed to be compassionate and merciful to others. We ask the Lord's forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, Ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. <laughs> Let 
us pray. O God, who chose the Bishop St. Patrick to preach your glory to the peoples of Ireland, grant through his merits and intercession that those who glory in the name of Christian may never cease to proclaim your wondrous deeds to all people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Amos. As Amiah said to Amos, Go, seer, flee, flee away to the land of Judah. Earn your bread there and prophesy there, but never again prophesy at Bethel, for it is the king's sanctuary and it is a temple of the kingdom. Then Amos answered Azamiah, I am no prophet, nor a prophet's son, but I am a herdsman and a dresser of sycamore trees. And the Lord took me from following the flock, and the Lord said to me, Go prophesy to my people Israel. The word of the Lord. The response to our psalm, sing aloud to God our strength. Sing aloud to God our strength. Sing aloud to God our strength. Sing a song, sound the tambourine, the sweet lyre with the harp. Blow the trumpet at the new moon, at the full moon on the festal day. Sing aloud to God our strength. For it is a statute for Israel, an ordinance of the God of Jacob. He made it a decree in Joseph when he went out over the land of Egypt. Sing aloud to God our strength. I hear a voice I had not known. I relieved your shoulder of the burden. Your hands were freed from the basket. In distress you called, and I rescued you. Sing aloud to God our strength. There is no strange God among you. You shall not bow to a foreign God. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. Sing aloud to God our strength. A reading from St. Paul to the Thessalonians. You know, my brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, 
As you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery. But just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak, not to please mortals, but to please God, who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed, nor did we seek praise from mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet if you say so, I will let down the nets. But when they had done this, they caught so many fish that their nets were beginning to break. So they sing signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For Simon Peter and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that he had taken. And so were also James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, the disciples left everything and followed Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. We know most about St. Patrick from his confessions. There's a fair bit of writings there. St. Patrick wrote his confessions towards the end of his life and it is evident from these confessions that he had come from a privileged background. His father was a town councillor, as well as a deacon of the church who had a comfortable house with many servants. Patrick says that he was born free of noble rank. Then suddenly his life was turned upside down. At the age of 16, he was taken captive with others and brought to Ireland, which at that time was not Christian. He found himself among strangers, gone where his comfortable home, his loving family, his freedom. He was now a slave with no rights or protection, without friend or future. It is hard to imagine the impact of such a traumatic experience on one so young. Yet writing in old age, he recognizes the great gifts that came to him during this painful and lonely time of exile. 
Although his grandfather was a priest and Patrick had been baptized, he acknowledged that as an adolescent he did not know the true God. However, in exile, while herding sheep in all kinds of weather, he had a spiritual awakening. He writes, of the great benefits and graces the Lord saw fit to confer on me in my captivity, he said. He says, my faith increased and the spirit was stirred up so that in the course of a single day, I could say as many as a hundred prayers and as almost as many in the night. Patrick found shelter in God's hands. Six years later, he knew his time had come to escape and after three days sailing and several weeks traveling through deserted country, he eventually made his way home to his family. However, the 22-year-old was now a very different person to the 16-year-old who had been taken captive. Having been profoundly touched by God in the years since he left his family, he was now sensitive to the call of God in his life. Sometime after returning home, he heard the Lord's call to launch out into the deep and to go back to the land of his former captivity, Ireland, to preach the gospel there. It was indeed a call to set out into the deep in the words of today's gospel reading and catch people for Christ. After training for the priesthood, Patrick arrived back in Ireland, this time as a free man. He speaks of himself now as a stranger in exile for the love of God. He writes of the people to whom the love of God brought me. His mission in Ireland was fraught with many dangers and difficulties of all sorts. Yet he had a strong sense of God's protective and guiding presence in his life and of all the Lord was doing through him. He writes, I am very much in debt to God, who gave me so much grace that through me people should be born again in God and afterwards confirmed. Looking back, Patrick could see the many ways the Lord had worked powerfully through his painful experience of exile in, adult, in an adolescent. Because of that traumatic experience, the gospel was brought to what Patrick calls the most remote districts beyond which nobody lives and where nobody had ever come to baptize, to ordain clergy, or to confirm the people. Patrick's life teaches us to be attentive to the ways that the Lord may be powerfully at work in the darkest of times in our lives, in the restructuring process of our archdiocese, in the way in the war in Ukraine, in the times of our own illness, and in the illness and death of loved ones and friends. The light of the Lord's presence is very evident in the generous response of so many people to those who have lost so much and to us who lose so much and in our painful journeys. Whereas it is never the Lord's desire that more misfortune should befall us, when it does come our way, he is always there among us, working to bring new life out of death, light out of darkness. The Lord worked through Patrick's dire situation of slavery to prepare him for a mission that would allow the light of the gospel to shine in the land of his captivity. Patrick's experience invites us to trust, to hope, that the Lord is working to bring some good out of human suffering. On this feast of St. Patrick, we in the Archdiocese are most grateful to God for the gift of faith which has been passed on to us to our ancestors, our Irish ancestors, especially the missionaries that came that went out into the deep and came from Ireland to Newfoundland, our early bishops and priests, to bring the faith and to educate the people in Newfoundland and Labrador, the Lord sent to our missionaries, Nan O'Nagel of Cork, Catherine McCauley of Dublin, Edmund Rice of Kilkenny, and many missionaries that came out from Ireland to spread Christ's message to all corners of the earth. Let us give thanks to God today for St. Patrick and the missionaries of Ireland for their courageous proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ here in Newfoundland and in so many other lands. Amen. Please stand now as we offer our prayers of intercession. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, our Archbishop Peter, and all who shepherd our church, that they may continue to lead us with courage and always serve the poor and weak. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for peace in our world, especially in Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for refugees, those who flee wars and poverty, in search of new beginnings. 
May they know the presence and protection of Jesus as he journeys with them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick recommended to our prayers, and we continue to pray especially for William Gannon, that the healing power of the Holy Spirit may be with them and comfort them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today in thanksgiving to God for those who brought the Catholic faith to Newfoundland from Ireland, our early Irish Franciscan bishops and priests, the Presentation and Mercy Sisters, and the Edmund Rice Christian Brothers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of our loved ones who have died, and particularly remember today our ancestors who brought the Christian faith from Ireland to our distant shores, and who passed it on to us, their descendants. For the early Irish bishops and priests, for the deceased members of the Presentation Sisters, the Mercy Sisters, and the Edmund Rice Christian Brothers. We also pray today for Marion Kawurnu, Patrick Neary, John O'Brien, Robert and Francis Colbert, Heather Duggan Cook, Jim Foley, that they may rest in the peace of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray today for the prayers in the quiet of your hearts today, your own intentions today. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for all the graces and blessings you give us every day, and we make our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit. God, forever and ever. Amen. Our offertory hymn, Lord of Creation, to you be all praise, number 498 in the Catholic Book of Worship.
my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. For the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. Look upon the sacrificial gifts we offer Almighty God on the feast day of blessed St. Patrick, and grant that we who celebrate the mysteries of the Lord's Passion may imitate what we do now through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through your Jesus Christ, our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Patrick you built, bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup we proclaim your death O Lord until you come again and therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Peter, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your people. Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Patrick, St. John the Baptist, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. We 
pray with confidence to our Heavenly Father in the words that Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ has said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And we share the peace of Christ now with one another. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections come to receive Holy Communion first, that you please maintain a two-meter distance in the communion line, and that you sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you do not wish to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion hymn is Bread for the World, 6.1 in Celebrate in Song. Jesus Christ, you are the bread of life. 
broken to reach and heal the wounds of human pain. Where we divide your people, you are waiting there on bended knee to wash our feet with endless care. Bread for the Jesus Christ, you are the wine of peace, poured into hearts once broken and where dryness sleeps. Where we are tired and weary, you are waiting there to be the way which beckons us beyond despair. Bread for the world, a world of hunger, wine for all peoples, people who thirst. May we who eat be bread for others. May we who drink. Call forward Sister Roisin Gannon, who is uh, in the leadership of the Presentation Sisters. Father Critch asked me to sing, it's almost a Hail Mary in Irish, in the Irish language. You might call it Gaelic, and um, according, and I know according to our history, we were forbidden to speak our own language. But this is a beautiful song, and I think you have the translation on your sheets. It's a rough translation. Oh, 
Let us pray. By the power of this mystery, O Lord, confirm your servants in the true faith, that they may everywhere profess in word and deed the faith for which blessed St. Patrick never ceased to labor and for which he spent his whole life through Christ our Lord. Thank you, Sister Rogine, for the beautiful uh, music today. Very appropriate, and uh, we wish you all the best and safe trip home this evening. As you go home, your brother William is not well, so uh, we uh, pray for him, continue to pray for, his, for him and for you, for a safe trip home. Thank all of you for your presence here today, uh, Donna Marie and John of music, and uh, Sharon there, and Brother Rick, and all those who helped out in any way today. Mary Barry for pr providing some, uh, some uh, baking for after our Mass today. So you're welcome down on the side here. We have some coffee and tea and muffins and uh, a little bit of fellowship together uh, to celebrate the great feast day of St. Patrick today. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by our own lives. Thanks be to God. Have a good day. Our missioning hymn is Hail Glorious St. Patrick and the sheets I think you have in your pew. Hail Glorious St. Patrick, dear saint of our isle, on us, thy poor children, bestow a sweet smile. And now thou art high in the mansions above. On Aaron's green valleys look down in thy love. Hail, glorious Saint Patrick, thy words were once strong against Satan's wiles and an infidel throng. Not less in thy might were in heaven thou art. Oh, come to our aid and in our battle take against sin in the fight for the faith. Dear Saint, may thy children resist unto death. Their strength in meekness, in penance and prayer. Their banner, the cross which they glory to bear. My people now exiles on men. 